Now, you might know him from his days in the boy band The Wanted, or for taking home the Glitterwall Trophy on the 13th series of Strictly Come Dancing. Well, now, Jay McGuinness is starring in the stage production of 222 Ghost Story and has turned his hand to writing, having released his first novel earlier this month. Jay joins us now on the sofa. A novelist? Morning. Where did this Good come morning. from? Well, it still feels really new. I've been a novelist for about a week and a day. Brilliant. <laughs> so that feels really weird. Then my giant head behind your head is just not fun for me at all. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> but the book, actually, we were lucky we get sent the book early, but, you know, the book, it actually it fits with what I imagine the sort of thing that you yourself love. It's, called, it's a fantasy. What is it? A romanticy, that they call it. It's a great <laughs> word. It's a mixture of lots of different genres. Yeah, I mean, as a kid, I only read fantasy. Like, from as a child to, to a teenager into an adult, and obviously, fantasy spans a bunch of different types. It's sort of your traditional kid stuff, and then also you've got the heartache of teenage love, and then you've also got adult stuff, which has quite mature themes. So I just um, I follow my heart. I follow what I like to read, and I found as a as a young reader, that was the only thing I read, and then that sort of reputation of like, oh, Jay always reads books, sort of got left behind because I was singing and dancing and all the rest of it. But I'm really happy that I can go back and use my brain for something that I've always enjoyed doing, you know? Is it cathartic as well? Because it, I, I imagine the discipline of writing a novel is so different to the rest of your day job, you know, be it singing <laughs> or acting. Or it, yeah. The, such different ways of using your brain. You yeah, it was, it was something that I hadn't used for a long time. And going, I, I, the way I, I wrote the first book was just about eight hours a day in the library. And I was perfectly happy to have a nice long walk, sit in the library for eight hours with me and my laptop. Like, no ghostwriter, no, no shade on anyone who like, uses those sort of tools, mm. but I just enjoyed the process of sitting me and my like, a sandbox sort of playing around and trying to make it right, you know? So you did it in the library? That's right. Did you find yourself going up and finding bits of references here and there? <laughs> I need to check this. No, honestly, I felt like a statue. I just stay okay. locked in on my laptop. I was actually in quite a few different libraries, and, and, the, and, the, and the different vibes of different libraries genuinely do inform your writing, and if I'd sit in a big, grandiose one with bookshelves, I'd find myself writing all really dramatic prose, <laughs> and then if I'd be in a rinky-tinky one, I'd, you know, be back to my usual waffle. Which did you prefer? <laughs> I'm not going to lie, being in a place with big, beautiful wooden bookshelves, it makes you feel different. It feels yeah. lovely if you can get to one like that. Did anyone ever clock you going in and think, <laughs> sure, that's Jay from the one Sometimes. Wanted, I using think the I'm... library. <laughs> What's he doing? I've got one of those faces that I think people just think they might know me. I'm like, do I know you? Where are you from? <laughs> like, Newark on Trent? I'm like, oh, never mind then. <laughs> I think I'm their cousin or something. That's, that's it. brilliant. And you manage to have that discipline. Lots of writers say that they can like, write for three hours a day. You manage to have that discipline to keep writing for eight hours a day. That's like a, a, a day job, it's a shift. Yeah, I think it's, actually, it's also a crutch. Like, I feel like I need all that time to sit and focus and come up with plot and character. Right now, like, I'm, I'm way busier than I was then, and so I've got to write while I'm on tour, and to, to steal four hours is way harder for me than to just take a whole day and do it. Did you ever have a whole day of writing and then you get home and go, that was rubbish? <laughs> <laughs> no, I will say, sometimes you write in a certain mood, though, and then when you read it back, you go, nope, I don't think the character would say that, like, that was ridiculous. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of... That's why I like to, I'd like to do it on my own. Lots of self-editing before the editor sees it first and says, OK, let's not bring in the... Let's not bring in witches too soon. <laughs> that's not, you know, they give you a nice sense of balance. Yeah. You mentioned that you're on tour, so you that's really right. are busy at the moment because you're acting. That's right, yeah. It's my first play without singing or dancing, which I'm really enjoying. And we're going around the country, and, and this play has done so well with different casts, and, and we, as a six, are enjoying getting out there and scaring audiences, really making them laugh. I love my character. He's a bit of a cockney geezer. He was played by Jake Wood when I watched it really, really well, and I just was absolutely desperate to get in this play. And touring it ourselves, I've really enjoyed that those reactions that I was feeling in the audience, sort of screaming and grabbing my manager's leg, like, oh, my gosh, um, that we're hearing them. And it's just, it's just been a really, really fun experience. There's a little snog, there's a little fight. You know, this dinner party gets really crazy while people wait until it's 2.22 in the morning. They wait to see if a ghost is going to haunt them. Um, and that's the point. Uh, there's been a number of casts of the yes. same play that does the tour. How do you bring something different to it? Do you look at it and go, I would play this in an entirely <laughs> different way? I think a lot of it is unintentional. Like, my version of Ben, the builder, is probably a bit more dopey than Jake Woods, who was a real confident Cockney geezer. Yeah. Mine's a bit more of a, like, friendly idiot. <laughs> but that's just because of what comes naturally. There is elements, though, there are elements that, of things I saw him do that I think 
pinching that, that was awesome. Oh. Comic timing and that sort of thing. So it will always be different with every cast, I think. More acting coming? Yeah, I mean, I'm, we go through until June, and my plan is, if I can do, a, a, like, a theatre-y type of job a year, it would be amazing, and then this book is the first of three. So I'm trying to sort of write as I act and do one book a year, one play a year, would be a dream. Yeah. Theatre-y. I quite like that description. <laughs> word a theatre-y kind of job. Yeah. Someone, someone's already annoyed typing <laughs> in. That's not a real word. Yeah, do not put that in your book. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Thanks. Jay, it's brilliant to talk to you. Loads of luck. Thank and you. Jay's new book is called Blood Flowers.